Ladies and gentlemen, those who are sitting two per two, we are really happy to welcome you and to see those being online. My name is Gustav Sterzant, and Miss Christine asked me who I was, and I'm asking that all time, as it depends on the moments of life and in life. Who are you? Uh, when you are not, who are you today? What role do you behold today? Today, for 12 years, the most convenient and comfortable nomination is long-standing father and husband. And I would ask the same. Christina Gaklau, who are you? Yes, I am in a similar situation. I am full-time mom. And very often it happens when I come home children are still sleeping and I implement and do all the things mom should do and the children usually are asking you you are disappearing in the very morning and appear back in the evening now I'm in constant and permanent process of learning in my life I think that it's similar for yourself as well Today we are looking into the map and we would like to take uh, a geographical lesson to find out where the Suriname, Suriname is located. I'm quite unsuccessful in that. I opened Google and understood that Suriname is somewhere where the uh, Gulf Stream begins, but the Gulf Stream ends at Iceland. Yes, this is really a cooperation with um, between Latin America or South America and the North. This is really very good collaboration and Suriname. Uh, yesterday I would really choose and opt for Suriname. Yes, this is the incentive we will be talking today. How? We will be speaking on inclusion, equity, equality and we really discussed today in the morning that equity and equality would not be the same in a boat contest in, uh, so women are quite voicing their opinion and their rights and I think that perhaps it could be really uh, meant to be and gentlemen be included in the discussion where they should start speaking about e equity and the incentive of barber shop which actually is hairdressers but for men and for gentlemen and Christina do you think I'm uh, going to barber shop myself twice uh, once per two months but what men are doing in barbershop? They are reading uh, female magazines because uh, they have quite uh, not, they are quite shy in asking those questions directly. So 10 steps to complete happiness. Are you successful like different uh, questionnaires and polls are saying in uh, women magazines? I do not know whether you do that or not. Yes, I'm admitting that. And yeah, do you read a magazine for men? Yes, women are admitting that. Women are participating in conferences and meetings like that. I'm sure that a lot of women are being online uh, today for this conference as well. I presume that if Suriname and Iceland can't, uh, can cooperate for the Gulf Stream, then the topic today would be barbershop conference on men's role in promoting gender equality in modern society. Of course, this is quite a name for a conference, but we will try to be uh, very down to earth in discussing those aspects of uh, men's life. Uh, we'll have also the topic on the parental leave or paternal leave, and we have exhibition here today of the photos and exhibition, yeah, a tooth bomb. If we have 
uh, used to see the super families on Instagram and on uh, social media, then this is really a truth bomb to see how that actually is. One of the diaper companies showed what are the six a month after a childbirth for a woman. So now, uh, not as it is really photoshopped, but real life. 90% of real life. And if we are speaking about advertising and uh, the role and impact of advertising, of depicting men throughout the decades, and we will pay special attention to that, and we will have uh, an expert from abroad uh, discussing that issue. We are really happy to see that people are not only equitable, but also responsible to each other in really following the social distancing and the requirement for wearing masks. And of course, definitely, we will not be uh, the uh, focus uh, or locus of uh, uh, pandemics here in Riga today. Uh, we are following the rules of social distancing, the disinfection, hand hygiene, and thanks to the Ministry of Welfare and the Council, uh, Nordic Council of Ministers uh, who are hosting the discussion on those uh, significant topics today online. We are available and we are streamed at the website on the Ministries of Welfare website. And we are providing simultaneous interpreting for that streaming for all our guests and participants uh, remotely. So when we are passing floor to the first elevating speech and introductory speech. And we finish our conversation and we announce the first speaker, Mr. Chris Lipschans, Parliamentary Secretary of the Ministry of Welfare of the Republic of Latvia, who will join us remotely and distantly. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chris. We can see you. What about the sound? So what what did we do wrong? So it's oral examination at the school. No sound yet. Yes, uh, may I start speaking? Good morning. Yeah, welcome. Good morning. Good morning, dear participants, far and away of the conference. I'm delighted that in such a challenging time we are capable of coming and reaching the dialogue on the role, on men's role in promoting gender equality, starting from the organization of the conference and addressing the public and the men in particular, we have found out that there are no uh, indifferent people in that issue. Uh, there are different perceptions, different uh, insights, as well as expectations towards men. But I must admit that in the last two decades, of the perception of the role of men in modern society have changed a lot. And the question is whether we will be capable of using those opportunities. And uh, we will have chance and ability to change our perceptions, opinions, and ways of life. We will be discussing the quite fluctuating and changing opinions and world views uh, regarding the role of men and women in the public society, in uh, modern society as well. Uh, the uh, common dialogue about men is of the utmost importance for today's conference so that we would really find and discuss our role in promoting gender equality as well. Iceland was the first to start such a format of barbershop conference where the conferences have been organized in many countries already, starting from 26th 
14. And Latvia has joined the list of um, the barbershop conferences being convened thanks to Nordic Cooperation Council of Ministers. Uh, the barbershop conference is an incentive presented by Iceland and Suriname in 2014, and it was inspired by the UN Global Solidarity Movement, he for she. To date, a number of several barbershop conferences have been taking place held in uh, Denmark, Iceland, Switzerland, and USA. Today, during our barbershop conference, both experts, practitioners, as well as individual men will share their opinions and the chances that they ha can change in the perception and the role of men in promoting gender equality as well as the perception of the roles of men and women in uh, our society for best options to balance work and private life as well as do the best for raising uh, children so that uh, cooperation between men and women, uh, between the genders, would facilitate the boosting and flourishing uh, society and public in the future, both by uh, promoting and facilitating motivation and loyalty of employees uh, when employers are able of balancing well uh, private life and work life at a very best equilibrium. Women more often are voicing their opinions regarding their role in a modern society, but statistical data show that women are in a less equal position uh, in life than women uh, than men. But when we are speaking for equal opportunities, both for women and men, it is really important and of crucial importance to have uh, listened to the uh, opinions and perceptions of men shared as well. Men are equal and must have equal chances and opportunities for changing their life, as well as choose and do the best for their talents to be pursued. To conclude, I would like to uh, emphasize that organizing any conference is very challenging at the moment of uh, pandemics and the second wave of um, the uh, COVID-19, and therefore I share my uh, greatest uh, um, gratitude to all the organizers and participants of the conference. And I truly hope that the discussion today will lead to the best society in the future. Thank you so much. And that is both question and motivation. And I remember a question. Um, I remember that at school time on reading classes or literature classes, uh, girls were the first to raise questions. No, I was not the first. I was sitting at the last uh, desk at school. The second introductory speech will be presented by Mr. Morgan Jensen, Minister for Food, Fisheries and Equal Opportunities and Minister for Nordic Cooperation from Denmark. And it is really uh, interesting that it is more than a, um, more of a title than a position and that title rotates among different authorities to really follow and have a permanent inter intertwining of that concept. And so we can say that he's at a share of equal opportunities currently. And the first question to Morgan is whether all the fish are equal and equitable in Denmark. Good morning. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you for the Latvian organizers for inviting me to open this uh, conference as part of the Danish uh, presidency of uh, the Nordic Council of uh, Ministers. And it's true here in, in, in Denmark, where we have the equal opportunities going to all ministries. That's our way of mainstreaming uh, the equal opportunities in, uh, in, in our society. Uh, and of course, in, in my opinion, uh, a modern society must include men into the discussions on gender equality and equal on, on equal footing with, uh, with with women, and there are basically, uh, as I see, two important perspectives if we truly want to involve men. First of all, men and boys have to be partners in promoting women's empowerment. They have to support ending discrimination against the women. And secondly, we have to acknowledge that men and boys have their own gender uh, equality challenges. 
men and boys must also benefit from increased equal opportunities. So we need to target initiatives directly at men too. For some, this uh, might sound provocative. Can we look at men's problems while women still face the majority of discrimination around the world? And my answer is clear. Yes, including men and men's problems does not mean that we shy away from focusing on women and women's problems. It does mean, uh, however, uh, that we take the first steps towards a modern policy on gender equality. Because promoting equality for both men and women is a win-win. Women and men both will benefit from a higher degree of gender equality and equal opportunities. And our Nordic Baltic societies will gain economically and the level of coherence uh, in our societies will uh, increase. One key element when promoting equality is to promote the equal sharing of family and work life. It's necessary to involve men in family responsibilities and to change traditional uh, perceptions and stereotypes. Allow me here uh, a few examples here from, from Denmark. I'm dedicated to promoting more men to take parental leave and to include more men into caregiving. I'm introducing a, a bill to ensure that digital communication from public authorities regarding children goes to both fathers and mothers. And I believe they will be more likely uh, to share the responsibility for the child care if they both receive the same kind of information. We are also considering how to deal with other important gender issues for men and boys such as their physical and mental uh, health, and how we can support boys in the educational system. And finally, yet importantly, I have established a youth panel to include young men as well as women into the discussion on future gender equality policies. We need to define and promote a modern and uh, diverse masculinity that includes all men. As a part of the presidency of the Nordic Council of Ministers, we have supported uh, this Fathershop uh, conference as well as the International Conference of, on Men and Equal Opportunities, which was held in Tallinn in uh, September. And I'm sure that with our common efforts, we will have a profound effect. We will be able to mobilize men and include them into our discussions like uh, it's done today. Companies also play a crucial role in promoting men's opportunities to take part in parental responsibilities. Reports show that fathers who take no or short paternity leave are more likely to say that their relationships with co-workers or managers will deteriorate if they took longer leave and they think it would negatively impact their chances to advance. And therefore, it is uh, important that leaders show support for both mothers and fathers going on parental leave and make both the leave and the return to work as smooth as possible. So what companies need is to promote fathers to take parental leave, to promote flexible job uh, work arrangements for both women and men, to develop policies and practices that support equal opportunities in the workplace and to promote an inclusive environment without discrimination and sexual harassment. And last but not least, management must pave the way and lead by example. The barbershop concept illustrates this very well. Male leaders need to take responsibility and walk the talk. And let's not forget that gender equality policies in the labor market are not an add-on uh, or a luxury. It's an economic necessity and a matter of fairness and equal rights. It is a win-win for all. In conclusion, it will not be easy to rethink our gender equality policies to include both women and men. But there's no way around it. We have to move forward. Only by including men can we truly establish a modern gender equal society. 
Our Nordic Baltic region is closely knit together. We call it the Nordic Baltic Eight. And when it comes to gender equality and equal opportunities, we have a lot in common and a lot to learn from each other. And I'm sure you will come up with interesting solutions and perspectives on how we can involve men. I wish you all a very interesting and fruitful day. Thank you, Morgan. I should add uh, that we have to reach a lot of success with this initiative. It would be also very useful for our ministers to um, to push each other because there is a very, very big responsibility. Uh, if we talk about uh, the fisheries, uh, it's not about uh, fish teams only. We are talking about the sailors, for example, sailing for some uh, half a year and suddenly there is one initiative allowing the sailor to come uh, on land and uh, to get something from this initiative. Because if your lifetime, lifestyle drives you all the time forward and suddenly you have the possibility to be with your family and somebody says, it's okay, you can sit at home with your family, with your uh, spouse, with your children, and uh, you can relax. You don't have to run again uh, for work. And yes, and somebody says, okay, you can deal with that. Well, okay, we are not experts in this, and uh, we will have a lot of participants that have more in-depth knowledge about that than we do. We are going to have two panel discussions, like two pillars, and I hope that when we leave today, we will have not only answers, but also rightly asked questions. And uh, we will also have a coffee break, uh, like a surprise, but uh, opening the panel discussion, uh, so we are talking about uh, the men's role in today's society, ideals versus reality, and I would like to invite to open this discussion one philosopher, one professor, one man, and finally father, Mr. Wentz Seales. And uh, I know that uh, it was a real challenge for Vance to include all he wants to say in 20 minutes long presentation, but uh, he has now to pull out this easy first stone. Uh, so please, Professor Vance Silis, you are welcome and you may applaud, you know. Yes, uh, hello. I'm very happy to see all of you here today. And I uh, really hope that I will say some meaningful things about this issue because to answer uh, what is reality, what is ideals, and this is a challenge. This is like contradicting to what I know. And this is not an absolute 100% right opinion. This is just a version uh, uh, how to make ideals uh, versus uh, reality in a normal narrative. Modern technologies as well are failing us. Sorry, I don't know whether I have to do something or not, but uh, my presentation is not moving. Oh, yes, it is. Thank you. So let's start with the question, what is masculinity? And that's not clear, that's very vague. We have to understand that this vagueness is not uh, accidental. Uh, society has uh, gone through evolution and the previous uh, types of masculinity um, were very clear for us, but it's not today anymore. What we hear very often is this requirement, be a man. And this requirement is quite demanding, as we know what it means to be a man. And often that is said by a lady who is not satisfied with the behavior of her man. 
um, because she thinks that he has to be like the stereotype man should be. And what is that? The traditional model is based in the perception that a man is defined by his uh, capability to uh, be strong, be self assured about himself. Uh, like uh, being dominant, but the, the man who is not dominating is not feeling masculine. Is it so? Then a man is oriented to rationality, efficiency, and sometimes we do not understand that uh, child raising is not effective and rational because the result will be after how many years? <coughs> It's not like I can raise my child right now here, but we don't know the final result. To hope to cope with discomfort, uh, with uh, problems and difficulties, uh, you need to suppress your emotions. Your and uh, for men, it's difficult to understand these emotions, and very often we suppress only our anger, and that's why society is full with uh, uh, contempt and um, full with rather angry and uh, aggressive men. And now I greet all the uh, internet uh, chat boxes. So, and that is a weakness of this mode, of this model. We cannot be 100% strong always. We cannot uh, work from the position of worse, uh, force. We have to somehow understand our weakness. We have to integrate our weakness, but we do not actually know what this weakness is and uh, very often uh, it, this weakness is feminized and uh, this traditional uh, perception is based in masculine hierarchy uh, everything uh, holds on a man uh, but nowadays we have a sensitive man uh, who has understood that uh, he wouldn't like always to win because he had understood that if a woman is dominating, it's normal. And when men refuse from traditional masculinity, they very often refuse from self-discipline and they uh, just go into um, um, very big position into uh, sexuality. Uh, okay, he is a good uh, conversation pal, and you can invite him to coffee, and uh, he can talk about literature. But when suddenly there is a fight, he will disappear because he is not and himself not able to all around himself. It's a man, child, because he has no discipline, no structure, and his biggest enemy is the traditional man who is insisting on discipline, on masculinity. And these two oppositions, today's soft man and uh, ancient strong man, it's not correct. Rough man, it's not correct. So we will either go into this rough uh, situation, which brutally does not correspond to social reality, or we will have such a more understanding of a masculinity that the man uh, will lose uh, masculinity and manless itself. Another model is a hero. Uh, you have to prove yourself. You have to uh, be uh, strong, but that is very, very difficult. It's a person who is all the time fighting, who is uh, uh, may uh, self-assuring uh, himself all the time. That 
the only thing how to show that he is a man is that he knows everything he uh, is going to fight if needed uh, he's going to die if needed so what can be said about that and there is uh, another type and the model which is based on nonconformism or the perceptions that I am the pirate I am the free um, wanderer I don't care about society I am masculinely independent and it's very important for me and uh, usually it means that this person uh, cannot get into any kind of relationship. If you look at um, beautifully trained, uh, fit uh, men who uh, have tattoos all over themselves, that is actually uh, that is just coming from bottom, that is coming from prison environment, prison behavior actually. Because Yes, tattoos come from criminal world, but I would say that tattoos belong to different thinking. The meaning of tattoos is sacral, but you cannot have tattoo if you don't grow up to them in your masculinity. So what is it at, at the basis of the crisis? So uh, the tradition or denial of this tradition going into some amorph uh, images and this uh, uh, character of the hero and anti-hero is very, very shallow. It's uh, very easy to wear leather jacket to make tattoos, uh, but it does not make you a man. Something else makes you a man, and let's try to answer uh, what is that. But right now we have to understand that we are talking about masculinity not because we lack men potential, because in every man there is potential, potential of development, but that it is very important today that something is deeply, deeply wrong with today's men. Uh, it's not a surprise that their life expectancy is 10 less uh, than uh, the, for me, uh, women. If we look at these uh, 150, 20, uh, 200 years uh, when there is this traditional uh, masculinity model, uh, we are right uh, forward uh, we uh, are cynic and we are reaching everything achieving all our goals no it's not that simple the traditional approach is not uh, valid not suitable any anymore i like this traditional approach but if it's uh, not with enlightenment with development uh, then uh, we have to talk about the inner hierarchy. We have to talk about the values of a man. It's very important, not what you wear, but what are your inner values. You can be dressed like a Batman or Superman, but you have to have your inner values. Also, uh, I would like to say that very, very important is the difference between men and women but femininity, femininity and masculinity does not belong to the notion of gender every person every human being has as a feminine as masculine side and that is why uh, this uh, online uh, event is so cool because I really hope that not only men are listening to us, uh, also uh, women are listening. And uh, if you are listening, uh, dear ladies, think about your masculine side also.
because uh, as I uh, already emphasized, uh, every human being has both side and if you look at women and they have developed their masculine features and that does not make them less feminine, right? That's why we say that the strong, the, the strong gender today, the strong sex today is not a man, but a woman. And of course, how can not you become strong if you have next to you just a half of a man. So the question about integration of feminine and masculine in yourself, inside, not outside, not in the society where you have to fight all the time, when you cannot humiliate other person saying that uh, he or she is weaker or less important. This rhetoric, traditional one, is not working anymore because you cannot say that a man is uh, better than a woman in hierarchy. No, that time has passed and uh, vice versa. You cannot say that there is no sense in gender um, diversity, then it's not clear uh, with whom I have relationship, there is no such polarity that makes this brightness. Uh, the masculine energy is being expressed as in men, as in women, and vice versa. Uh, sometimes uh, men uh, are more tired, more vulnerable than women, and sometimes women are more strong than men, and again vice versa, they change their emotions, and that's absolutely normal. It's just like in a sex, sometimes you are at the top and sometimes you are at the bottom. So uh, let's maybe not try to answer what is masculinity, but from what it consists, from what structural elements can we build this uh, uh, masculinity. And here we talk about a map, a compass, about uh, sexuality, uh, gender roles, and be open-minded. And this is a short version. So for uh, important questions, blocks of questions. You can read about that in the um, book uh, of Yuris Rubenis Vinch and uh, Vinch und Vinja, he and her. He, uh, Mr. Rubenis is one of the progressive uh, mindsets. He is looking outside the box, uh, looking outside the traditional stereotypes. So, uh, first of all, question to a man, what to do with our aggressive with aggression, with our uh, strengths. Yes, we are stronger, but does it mean that we solve all the problems with our strengths? Does it mean that we have to deny our strengths and and say that there is no difference between a strong uh, guy and a vulnerable uh, lady? There is. But that does not mean that this uh, uh, difference makes us uh, dominant uh, better. No, it's, um, it just gives us some uh, uh, advantages sometimes, force and aggression. How to express that in nowadays? And that is a question about how to act in a conflict. Men uh, are usually lose in their conflict situations with women, not because they uh, cannot, uh, no, they can, cannot uh, argue uh, with arguments, but that they cannot uh, discuss issues like peers. And that leads uh, to alcoholism, uh, to abuse of alcohol, to abuse of uh, other substances, of tiredness, of burning out. And at the moment when the man, man comes home with uh, this heavily earned money, 
it nothing nothing works because the well-being and welfare of the family is also uh, related with the well-being, emotional well-being, emotional welfare. He has to be uh, able to play with his children, to uh, speak with his wife, and also we can talk about the uh, erection. Uh, there's no erection if you are tired. Um, intelligence, intuition, uh, knowledge. And there's, we can uh, we can call it bullshit detector, uh, which you should use when you watch uh, TV, uh, listen to news, read the internet in order to understand in what society you are really living in. And we sometimes do not know all information. We have to make decisions by trusting to what is told to me by my consciousness. And the moment when somebody tells you, I love you, it's not the moment of making uh, rational decisions. That is very fragile admission. And I love you. I I believe that we will manage to do that, that we will succeed. And uh, that's difficult for men to say because they say, how can I know that I love her? At last, the power and responsibility. That is really a question in Latvia. We usually are harmed and have been harmed by power. We understand power as aggression in Latvia, power as uh, dominance. But power is the only power that we can have to make this world to be a better place. The truly powerful is that who leaves the grassland greener and the city cleaner and the world becomes more joyful and enjoyable to the society and uh, more powerful is that who is stronger and defends a weaker one next to that we understand what is fair and honest because power loses at a moment when the power uh, turns uh, into aggression uh, when it forgets about fairness and justice so what is the way and path to masculinity this uh, fourfold model should be uh, complemented and supplemented with one no single recipe, uh, receipt, recipe, and this is only the process. This is only the way. And the first question is how I do manage with that myself. And these are three significant aspects to start to be on the initiation way, which usually is a crisis, which really damages the old self and selfdom when we are undergoing through uh, transforming experiences. These are different tests. This is the way, the way to leave your comfort zone when you must really plug into and go deep into that inconvenient, uncomfortable issues and contemplations. And what is my way? This is Talpavirium, which is room and space for men. We have different uh, reading materials, we have different articles, we have men group, uh, to-do lists, discussion where authentic discussion and self-assistance as inter-assistant in a slide showing of uh, to make way for the pure and genuine selfdom of a man to see oneself true self in a mirror at the fullest of the your and his potential thank you so much thank you vent Silis. so this is really a title a man in today's society ideals versus reality I understand that it was really only a title explained, uh, brief discussion, 
to relay, stream, line the and safeguard the discussion. He will be among us somewhere in the hall. So, sorry, I will take my chair here. So, I will be next to you both. So, it's really a feminine and masculine represented in a very good balance here today. So, daily speaking, from the way we understand that we men must really have a blow into our head so that something would change. But the women have the advantage of the soul and intuition to do the way they want it to be. So, of course, nobody has prevented the quite an opposite position and situation. I am really emphasizing, emphasizing that uh, relatively masculine and relatively feminine uh, could also mean that to be completely masculine you must go all the way of your femininity. But I must say that women are really knocked on their head by different challenges and uh, situations and problems so often that they are turning quite indifferent to that and uh, kicking the ass uh, doesn't help changing. So the participants of our panel discussion who will join him and we would like to present the next one coming from abroad as well and let us start our first uh, panel discussion and we will announce the panelists today so internationally polite we are one of the speakers panelists who are, is coming from abroad from Croatia and the role of advertising in media and promoting gender equality, but the burnout syndrome, uh, unbalanced working life, Tabor's uh, Davor uh, Bruketta, creative director at the creation advertising agency Bruketta and uh, Zinic and Gray. So we'll have two minute uh, self presentation slot for your uh, position and opinion on the uh, men's role on the gender equality. Uh, Davor, are you with us already? Have you joined us? Good morning, Croatia. Good morning, do you hear me? Yeah, we, ha we can hear you pretty good. So what's your take on this subject? Two minutes. I don't hear you, You don't hear me, you don't hear us. What about okay, now? Okay, now I hear you. Okay. Good. Good morning, Davar. How do you feel about Good this subject? Uh, thank you. First, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me for, for this conference. I was really motivated to join because finally somebody is talking about uh, gender roles and equal gender opportunities from a positive perspective for men. I think positive motivation for change is the best motivation, and it's a really fresh angle on uh, on gender equality uh, so yes thank you for inviting me for, for your conference um, we have a great we have a great problem with that because uh, what what happened last couple of decades is that women have all uh, all the tasks the same as men uh, but men did not uh, acquired all the women roles that women have with children, uh, the family roles of women, and uh, it just didn't happen. And I think it's very sad because I personally had an opportunity to be six months on paternity leave. And that was the most uh, inspiring, the most emotional and the most beautiful experience I had in my life. Uh, first of all, I connected with my child in a way that uh, I didn't connect to anybody in the world. Uh, and I had really the most beautiful six months in my life. And I would really recommend everybody to, to try that. Uh, I would stay even longer if I could, but I have my own business, so I had to go back. Uh, but men do not understand that. And uh, advertising has, uh, has a very big role in that, to explain uh, men the opportunities of, of uh, equal gender roles. Uh, advertising is reflecting the society 
uh, but also advertising is highly affects uh, the popular culture uh, and the way society uh, functions. So I think if there is anybody in, in, in audience from advertising, I think that should be uh, our role besides our commercial roles to, to, to promote uh, gender equality and to promote positive uh, opportunities for men uh, that opens when, when uh, both genders are uh, have equal uh, opportunities. Thank you, Davor. We will be getting back to you uh, mm -hmm. soon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he is also uh, on the jury of New Yorker Crest and his advertising company has received uh, several hundreds of different awards and prizes and he will uh, be really a visionary on the advertising domain on the role uh, of um, so he could also advise us whether Mr. Proper uh, later on can be turned from the strong one into a quite a sensitive man being on the uh, parental leave, perhaps. Yes, and the next uh, panelist of our discussion, uh, the youngest, if I may so, the youngest, yeah, the principal of the school. And a uh, principal of the school uh, usually uh, is associated with my so uh, it would really, I would be really happy that the principal of the school would not be a dreadful monster. Children and parents are called to when something wrong has happened. But such a young gentleman, Kristaps uh, Zalais, one of the leaders, uh, aged 26, uh, by according to the ranking by Forbes, as one of the opinion leaders in education field. So some briefly on the topic. Uh, what is your perception? So I am not 26 anymore. <laughs> Sorry. This topic is very exciting. If we are considering these educational institutions, we are speaking about the number of uh, employees, of teachers at schools, by genders, and in a Latvian education system. But I think that it is worth discussing what school is capable of uh, giving, sharing to a pupil, to a student in terms of uh, the roles of genders. Uh, I heard that, uh, yes, and I know that school is a place when we are really associating with different school su subjects uh, like um, uh, math, uh, literature, Latvian language, etc., physical education, and so on. But I uh, had uh, some answers uh, prepared for my examination and test changed, and I was completely uh, unready to the life. But the question of gender equality, we are considering, and uh, social sciences is now a school subject of our schools, and we are speaking about uh, collaboration and cooperation, and cooperation uh, between school and home of a student is of utmost importance of showing, exemplifying, uh, sharing opinions and sharing knowledge. That is cooperation between a school and a family home. And uh, if we are sharing something, some knowledge to students at school, but they will see completely different picture and attitude at home that will not help them in uh, the future. And this is really briefly on my part. Thank you so much. Kristaps definitely is a leader in his school, uh, Laurentia Elementary School, and it's really a huge responsibility to understand that you must really uh, implement the full-fledged educational process, but on other um, on other half, so on other side, uh, boys. It's really interesting that every day I am welcoming, I have a ritual as a principal of the school in welcoming all the students in the school. So, and uh, many boys really uh, discussed and told me that uh, I was welcoming them in a suit um, as a principal. 
And on the 1st of September this year, the, many of them came in suits um, as well. And that was really example by myself uh, to be fit and uh, dressed according to the situation. And perhaps a school is not the only environment where uh, some voice can be uh, really invested in uh, young people where they can voice them. Uh, Martin Stachis is the next panelist today. When Martin was uh, addressed uh, for the conference, uh, he was not a mayor of the capital of Latvia, Riga, yet, but now he is a mayor as well. Therefore, he has a lot of different uh, duties more now, and he must then leave for uh, balancing gender equality and issues at the Riga City Council later on today. Uh, he's a voluntary trainer in motivation program for school children MOT. Uh, people being powerful, uh, like Gustavs on his TV broadcast, to create an image uh, which is perceived by masculine image. I uh, feel like that at my home, <laughs> exactly at my castle, exactly the same. Good morning. I would take a different perspective uh, as a mayor of Riga now. Mot or mute in Norwegian means uh, courage in Norwegian language and that program Motivation program for school children, which was uh, created two uh, decades ago in Norway for uh, Olympic athletes and Olympic children, is well received and uh, distributed in Latvia as well. Uh, we have three values that is, courage for taking on life. Uh, courage uh, to uh, undertake responsibility for uh, taking care of another person's life. And I uh, liked very much uh, that Van Seelis in his presentation mentioned the way of finding self dom of a man and working proactively with uh, school children and boys between age between 13 and 16. Uh, that will really help them taking their courage and choices more reasonably and more uh, bravely. The next panelist is Arman Salps, father of two children. So when a family is really a place where a boy turns into a man and that who uh, will, uh, who is a father and will really take and show an example to his son as well. One of his functions, which could be a hero in the eyes of his children and a hero showed by Vince Seelis in a very positive key as Armand is. He jumps high, he jumps far away and he turns into a hero not in the eyes of uh, his children but also in the eyes of the society and uh, the people who uh, see uh, the profile of Armand's showing, uh, showcasing his life as father with children. Yes, I uh, spent much time with my children and uh, nowadays uh, people forget how important to be present and be engaged is. I try I try not, but actually I naturally do be present in the life of my children, my wife. We are creating and forming, shaping the team with quite a, uh, open and roles. One does one duty, one uh, other does the second, and sometimes we exchange and change, we replace each other. So uh, something happen um, somebody is better at something else. But I think that is the most important that the team functions and I really spend my life with my beloved ones. But uh, there is no time for something, it is only illusion. Yes, quite true. Uh, you create your space and time. So you create opportunities and not are looking for any justifications. 
Yes, we actually have to look at our influencers and uh, we have to look at the real family life and we have to detect how much of that is true and uh, how much is not. Yes. Nobody pays for that, that you are in your family, with your family. Now, I uh, would say that you are rewarded because you are rewarded by uh, the laughter of your children, by happiness of your wife. And that is a driver for me. Uh, I like to look back and clap myself on the shoulder and say, Atta boy, good done. Well. Uh, it's interesting uh, whether uh, you can really play a uh, father. And now we have the next speaker who is actor and playwright, uh, <coughs> Arthur Adeitsis. Uh, maybe you can go home and just uh, uh, play your identity. How is it, Arthur? Now you cannot hide uh, your identity from children, I would say no, because they are really uh, waiting for a dad and they really need only a dad and dad maybe a spider or a wolf or whatever they want me to be. I have been different animals, but I uh, think that I will more speak from the positions of a playwright. Um, uh, who tries to analyze a society, who is uh, looking for uh, problems, for conflicts. Because uh, if a person wants to be a real man and uh, he really succeeds and nobody is writing plays about that because nobody is interested in that. Uh, but the, the drama, it's about the screwed people. And right now, that the one who makes more screwed people are, is the cooler and the coolest one. But some time ago, when looking for our uh, tragical hero, me and my colleague, we finally end up uh, with uh, the man for whom everything is uh, ideal. Family, two children, great wife, ev he has everything, but he was our tra tragical hero. And uh, we were uh, trying to find the answer why. Well. Uh, I was uh, thinking about you when Arthur was speaking. Why? Uh, I don't know, but somehow I saw the parallels. I would like to say about those bombs of truth, which we are not exploding in the society, and we are always acting with the right thing, with, uh, uh, with our mask on the face. But I prefer to live in the reality, which is at home. Uh, the outside bonuses, good scores, I earn at home. So I can go outside when I have done my homework and passed my exams at home. Washing dishes, uh, time spent with children, uh, disputes with the wife, that, that is mandatory part of everyday life. So when you do your homework, then you go outside. But yes, this is actually very good cognition of our discussion. But uh, yes, uh, you uh, mentioned this uh, babble or, or story. Uh, so uh, we would like to hear your stories, how to characterize uh, the uh, nowadays, the contemporary man. So let's say in three words, uh, how you characterize uh, men. So those who are online, you uh, have uh, to find us on uh, website and you have to enter the code 7590731 Mentimeters. 
and you can also put in your uh, three uh, characterizing words and we will try to integrate also uh, the questions uh, if they are you can ask uh, these questions uh, during uh, online uh, uh, streaming in uh, Facebook uh, in comments. So uh, if we look again uh, at uh, our uh, panel uh, that is uh, man's role in today's society, ideals uh, versus reality. And I will remind you that as a panel speakers, we have Mr. Van Seals, philosopher, associate professor, and uh, Christoph Zalaisa, who is a principal of Laurentri Elementary School. He is not 26 years old anymore. Uh, Martin Statis, a voluntary trainer and the mayor of uh, Riga City, Arman Salps, father of two children, Mr. Dever Broketa from Croatia, and Artur Dietzis, actor and playwright. So, but I would like to tell you one story. Uh, one coach of uh, sports uh, activities was very confused uh, when one of the most silent boys approached the coach after the training and said, can you please tell me how I proper fight those who all the time make me crazy? And that was a uh, that was a trainer, a coach of a box, and uh, and he was rather shocked, and um, uh, and and I discussed with uh, him how he started to uh, talk with the boy because he is sort of teaching how to fight, but at the same time uh, the small boy is asking how to fight properly with his enemies and he said that when he went home he just wanted to get totally drunk because he was really stressed with this situation well if you look at facts 23 percent or every fifth child come from insufficient uh, family from single family where there is either only mom or only dad or grandmother and then according to statistics uh, the and the majority of teachers are, are women. Uh, then uh, there are a lot of subjects in the school, and uh, this school children, uh, th this school boy, uh, sees that for girls uh, this uh, school system is much better. Uh, they have better marks. Uh, they succeed more. Uh, they can. Uh, cope with this task, uh, not making big efforts. So at one day, it's clear that a boy will ask himself, what I'm doing here? Why do I need that at all? So at that time, he starts to looking for a belonging, for belonging to society. He's belonging to society. And then, of course, uh, there might uh, embrace new tendencies about some kind of satisfaction and these can uh, be also bad tendencies like starting to smoke well that sounds so cool so uh, that is the picture we usually see at mod trainers so as a trainers in mod we are not uh, starting to reproach uh, the the boy but starting to ask what is your uh, dream what do you want to achieve and of course trainers in mod program they definitely should be men but we are looking for creative for open minded uh, men so then we start to ask these questions. We are not uh, reproaching. We play interactive games. We try to interact with the, this boy or these boys in different ways. So we give them role games in order to understand what they need, what uh, young boys need in school. And we are sure 
that young boys who have um, good skills, uh, understanding of what they need, um, will be able to cope better with society, with the mobbing at school, with relationship uh, with uh, their parents and, uh, and the school children and teachers. And the mobbing is one of the problems right now. There is a silent mobbing which is going on in the, uh, which is going uh, via uh, mobile phones, which is happening via mobile phones. Well, yes, uh, you know, it feels like uh, everybody is uh, our client. Every discussion comes back to school always. So um, people very often say that uh, the school is the one to be blamed for everything. And I would say no. Uh, we also cooperate with uh, MOT uh, program and MOT trainers. But you have to understand that uh, there is not one golden key for everybody, for every person. Uh, for example, do you know which is uh, the most dangerous place in school? Do you know? Toilets? Yes, you are right. And especially uh, boys' uh, room, uh, boys' toilet. Why? Uh, for example, uh, we uh, have uh, um, sports uh, teacher uh, who is working outside the school in the yard. Then uh, and there is me as a principal of the school. And then we have one repair. So it means that not um, many strangers can come in. But nevertheless, uh, when uh, we are asking which is the most dangerous place in the school, is a boys' toilet. And like I said, we are uh, cooperating with MOT. Uh, but like I said, there is no golden key for everyone. And we, as a school, we are trying to find this golden key. Uh, and we also have to look at uh, the parent side. And uh, for example, uh, the mom will say, yes, but uh, we told him that if he is being abused by somebody, then they can fight against them. So we have to work also with parents. Yes, we are talking about the code of ethics, the code of values. We have to understand that. Um, and, uh, and in this situation, which, which you mentioned, Yes, it's very uh, important that uh, young people have, uh, let's say, trustees to whom they can entrust their doubts, their fears. Um, and uh, uh, like uh, sometimes uh, teacher says, uh, you just have to talk with uh, this uh, bad boy and uh, and then uh, when you see then you have tried to speak with this offender for three times it's not working then the only uh, way how to deal with it is fighting and maybe such kind of issues uh, uh, teachers are seeing uh, every day the else outside the home becomes this first teacher in your future masculinity Do you hear us? Sorry, but no, I didn't hear a question. Sorry. Yeah. So, Can what's you your take on this? What are we talking about here? That the lack of father figure back home, and then somebody else becomes a father figure outside your home as the first teacher in masculinity, uh, a future uh, man in society. But I, 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 I'm not. I'm not a family psychologist. I have no idea how this mechanism works. But what I know is, uh, from my part of, of, of work, is that advertising does uh, a really great deal of influence, uh, positive and negative. Uh, I was listening to the podcast yesterday from Mark Pritchard, who is uh, CMO of PNG. Uh, and he was explaining how advertising can become force for good and for growth. Uh, for example, uh, their brand Gillette uh, Gray did a huge campaign uh, last year about toxic masculinity and trying to exp 
explain what the new man should be. Uh, it was a great backlash from uh, conservatives uh, in countries all around the globe. It was a big global campaign. Uh, but what Mark Pritchard says that uh, on the end of the day, uh, most of the people liked the campaign and rewarded the brand for taking a clear stand in this situation uh, with the growth, with, uh, with uh, on the end of the day, selling more, more products. And people today uh, expect from brands to take a stand on social issues. And this is one of, of crucial social issues, uh, the gender equality. Uh, and people are ready to reward uh, when brands take a clear stand on, on, on social issue. And PNG, one of the biggest FMCG companies in the world, proved that it pays off to take a clear stand on social, uh, on social issues. And the greatest example of all uh, is Gillette, who really changed their course of communication uh, and trying to, 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 to change toxic masculinity in, in society. Thank you, Davor. Uh, toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. uh, toxic masculinity. That's interesting notion. We were coming from home to school, from school to home. So what happens at home which are the first alarm signals red flags we are not uh, noticing and we should notice that's that's question i can answer in future after I don't know how many years because right now I don't know because right now I try to do uh, the best according to my understanding to show the best example to uh, to raise uh, children and I'm analyzing myself and this problem of time is uh, Well, we are fighting for gender equality, but at that moment, uh, we are talking about personalities. We are not talking about gender anymore. So at my home, uh, there is my wife, me, and we are two strong personalities uh, who can help with everything on their own. But we live together. We have common children, so we want to give our best to our children. I want and she wants and I as a man have I have to find my own position what can I do how can I protect my family so uh, nowadays I can do that by taking over all the free duties okay yes traditionally it was like the dishwashing or cooking or, or raising children caring about children these are duties of uh, of a wife but no i am a man now and so not my wife to be tired and overworked i take those free duties uh, to myself so i come home from work i make uh, meals uh, i make dishes i put my bed into uh, my uh, children into bed and so but then again it seems to me that i do more than I should and I want to sort of uh, receive some kind of reward for that. But uh, if uh, I don't receive that award, but uh, my wife says, but you don't have to do that, I can do that myself. So there's a conflict immediately. And then I have to find a positive conflict outside the family, not inside the family. Can you mention some example of that? Well, for example, well, um, like I, be, I mentioned before about uh, the play. Uh, that 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 was a variant that, that there is a man who finds a 
conflict with the walls of his house and he decides to make a window in this wall without any construction knowledge and background because he is absolutely sure that uh, that's uh, the east side and in the morning there will be sun coming into the window so he does not understand uh, why he is doing that but that is his conflict with this wall and uh, that is a conflict with his incapability to uh, find tools well for me you know to put a painting on the wall that is quite a challenge so to put it together to find and uh, to find toxic masculinity and Arthur's uh, offers a solution to that a positive conflict to be found outside home <laughs> So I follow the discussion and I have several conclusions made already. So we are speaking on what the uh, image of father on masculinity is brought, but whether it is the image of father or that is a masculine a figure of a coach or whatever. But when we are discussing that, then uh, but you are a man, why you can't bring up your son to be a man? So it seems that we are really putting all on one weight part of the scale. As father is a primary figure uh, of masculinity, so fathers are quite different. One is a ballet master, another is a box coach. And there is no perception and image of father, a common one. Father is a teacher, and this is why we have quite a dreadful situation. Thank you, uh, sorry to all the teachers, but criticism to the educational system, which is fighting with a completely condemning situation that energy, energetic, healthy, sexy guys, existential um, image of teachers, of men at school. There is no figures at all. What is a signal to a student that is the place, a school is a place where uh, masculinity, a man uh, comes to school, image of a man comes to school and dies there. No, but when we are uh, as soon as we are reinvesting and recreating the uh, masculine figure at school, at educational system, uh, there will be no change because uh, assertive, passionate men, teachers are not able to come to a school and he cannot afford being um, condemned and uh, really dominated over at the salary he cannot support his family so there uh, will be no respect there will be no trust and the position that uh, students will come uh, to such a teacher and discuss very challenging issues and uh, the position of government towards teachers it is discriminative one and we have an example that a young principal of the school I am ready to worship thanks for being at all that at least we have yourself so otherwise we wouldn't have any example to show and the next moment the next aspect is when a little boy asked uh, a box uh, coach to please uh, teach me fighting against uh, this students as the boys um, who are mobbing myself. I am uh, taking my nine years old son to uh, oriental uh, fighting um, fights teacher. It's not about fighting to learn how to fight and to hit. So when he that will be strategy and not a defense and he will become toxic. Therefore, I hate toxic masculinity, which is the next topic I would like to dwell on. Toxic masculinity, we are placing and uh, placing toxic femininity. That is the result of 
toxic uh, masculinity is a result of toxic femininity. And we will not uh, solve that by uh, putting femininity on the pedestal, on the monument. We cannot uh, choose a, a minister of education and science and ultra feminist uh, to really fight for the rights of men at school. So, Christine, sometimes you do not cope with the situation at home and you are asking your husband. So, uh, son is not listening to myself, he is not doing home tasks and so on. Husband comes, a father comes and says, do your home task. This is power authority to call it, like Deus Ex Machina, like a savior from the sky above to place the little one against the total authority to do something he doesn't like. What happens? What is wrong with the situation? I wish to complete, uh, complete my idea. The last topic, which is fighting against a wall, uh, externalization of inner conflict. Why men are so bad in uh, managing themselves. It's easier to for, uh, to have a conflict and confront and not to confront with a female, but to uh, fight some external uh, enemy, uh, whether that is another man or some political situation and so on. So when a woman, a mother calls a father, be a man and uh, really uh, really uh, tell your son you are the bad one you are the bully uh, who um, is damaging so this is continuation of a mother of the so david robertson we have discussed the topic a lot said that i was afraid of my father because uh, my father was uh, working a lot uh, outside the house and a mother usually was scaring me that if you do something wrong, father will come. And I was very afraid of that. I would like to finish with that. Please start working with the inner conflict. Please perceive a conflict between a little boy who is mobbed at school and a person trying to solve that is uh, my inner conflict because every story is very powerful. This is really heartbreaking that box coach is addressed by uh, by a little boy when the uh, box coach wished to go and fight himself for him to defend him. Please raise your hands here in the audience and our remote participants of the con uh, conference uh, on Mentimeter.com code was uh, 7590731, so cooperation. <laughs> uh, Women are better at logistics and in really keeping, maintaining the fire in the oven. Uh, team spirit and collaboration and cooperation, could it be an answer? Could it be that a mother, a woman at home, would uh, not be only the nice one, but also could be quite strong? personality, not by experimenting, but uh, personally at our home. Yesterday, for instance, a son hit uh, his sister. So we came together, all together, and we discussed. But that is not the way that I am coming, uh, addressing my son, saying that uh, this is wrong, t uh, that was wrongdoing, uh, you cannot hit girls at all. But of course, depending and corresponding and respecting the age of each child, we are discussing all together in our family team. And this is I try to strive in my life is exemplifying learning and teaching by example. So we have really eternal family uh, question whether uh, everything starts in school or in family. I am not in my program, I am focused on children. I cannot change parents. Uh, parents are only the only uh, individuals who can change themselves. But the second lecture we have at our program uh, for school children mod only for 
parents. Uh, the first lecture and the first lesson, we are looking for uh, dreams that children have. And on the second lecture, we are contemplating and giving feedback uh, and some contemplations to parents then. So in the program, we do uh, four major elements. I try to develop social skills in young people so that they could be able of uh, speaking with other individuals in the society. I'm uh, working with the environment. We are not focusing on young people of themselves only. We are uh, working with uh, entire class. Uh, first of all, we are working with the environment, that is the class of the first team or the first environment, to take care of others. We have a very interesting game. We are uh, sharing uh, cards, play cards. Uh, those who have a better score in uh, cards um, are uh, uh, telling compliments to those who have less score. and. Uh, I'm happy to see those excited ones who had uh, less score in the car in the play cards, and they are addressed by everybody else uh, in the class, uh, showing uh, and telling compliments to them uh, to them and asking questions about themselves. And in my position as a man, I do what I can in my family. But as a tra mod trainer, I'm really focused on the contribution and input I can make in, uh, during three years. And I have had meetings already when already grown up uh, former students of my uh, program are uh, approaching me on the streets. I have a courage button here, and I'm not afraid of anything uh, in the life for 30 seconds. And he understands yet that such a courage button is invented. This is only imaged only, but he understands that he still, when being grown up man, still uses quite often. So courage button. Do you have brave button? <laughs> button of braveness. Do you have courage button? Here, I have this one. We are talking about where uh, where does this little man becomes a big man, a responsible man, family, school, uh, some trainer. Advertising is a pretty peculiar thing here because it's a social air, uh, arena. And you mentioned social awareness campaigns. That's good. You know, brands can do it. But can this peculiar way of communicating uh, promote equality and responsibility? And how, without thinking of getting profit and then to, to coping for best idea and, and, you know, the... But advertising is commercial activity. So uh, it, was always, it was always a question, uh, do brands have any positive effects by promoting positive attitude in the society? And as I mentioned before, PNG, huge global company serving 5 billion people on Earth, proved that it pays off commercially to it. So it's not just social responsibility, it's, it's really commercial activity. And it pays off. That, I think it, it, the most important message that we learn from, from PNG. Uh, if that pays off for PNG, it pays off for everybody and they prove it on so many brands uh, and they're still and that's their main strategy actually because you know it's so this this old advertising was uh, was was working with with gender stereotypes but uh, this contemporary advertising is promoting uh, good values in, in, in society and influence society. And the money invested in, in advertising is becoming force for good, but also from economic growth. And that's the most important learning uh, we have now. And even I live in Croatia and I work for, uh, I work in different countries. And 
it works everybody it works in croatia it works in less developed countries it works in more developed countries and i think every advertiser advertiser sh should think how his advertising budget will become a force for good and consequently a force for economic growth it's but never it's never has been in history that it really pays off to invest in goodness it pays off it works devor vai pavisam īsi tu varētu raksturot kāds would you be so kind to characterize what is the demand demanded image or figure of modern man what you would like to see it and how you showcase that what is the uh, demanded uh, publicly demanded image or figure of a modern man in any environment on the streets in advertising uh, in advertisements in commercials and so on what is the figure or image demanded by the public what a modern man should look like <laughs> I think the biggest benefit for men from from this gender equality is they can attach themselves to their emotions and they can show emotions. Traditionally, we are not supposed to show emotions. Emotions are for women. And although we know rationally it's stupid and it really it really it's is beneficial for the person to show emotions, we have somewhere in the back of our heads that you know men are, should be strong women should, uh, should can deal with the emotions and it's really it was like that for many many generations and it's really hard to change that uh, and it will take generations to change but men will succeed on the end and uh, men will have opportunity to benefit from showing and expressing their emotions and on the end of the day uh, being more, uh, more, more, more uh, healthy in, in terms of uh, uh, more, more uh, psychologically healthy, and uh, I think the, the, the modern man is the man who can express what he feels, and uh, you can see that in advertising. It's more and more often that men are actually taking uh, that role, and. We see positive effects on, on, on brands who are showing contemporary men in their advertising, not playing with old, uh, old gender roles. Uh, so, yeah, emotions. Gamer, can you really see uh, the market change if we involve sensitive and not so confident men, for example, in Old Spice advertising? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a joke and it's actually it, you, now we can joke with that 30 years ago it would be deadly serious advertising but now it's a joke and everybody understand it's a joke thank you Gavar so we have online question that would be a question that Vince Seals would like asked by a lady Toxic masculinity is as a result of toxic femininity. Please do not forget how it is uh, dreadful to really uh, switch over all the responsibility to a woman again. So why uh, every toxic masculine man, man has a toxic mother? relationship with mother is the hardest uh, stage or section of a man's growing up and i would like to explain that where a woman or women uh, a mother and a granny are, gr are bringing up a man this is not the uh, I do not have a task uh, to blame someone and to show finger to somebody but uh, a boy grows up blaming mother who is dominating and femininity is showcased on him put vertically 
down from the top to the bottom. And if he doesn't have a balancing figure, father's figure, a little boy has only two options. So he must adapt to such a tragic situation of single parent uh, family where the powerful, aggressive power, power of mother, he can choose to uh, take vendetta to every other woman in his life. In Latvia, actually, we are uh, superpower of misogyny. Eh? So majority of uh, men are taken away their masculinity by a woman. That is really an injured man who uh, hasn't coped with that uh, sy um, syndrome of motherhood. And uh, second option is to really be suppressed. This is a really not a man, but already a person only. And now, several decades uh, later, uh, women are really very surprised where all the masculine men are disappeared and there are only uh, cowards left who are not capable of taking their masculinity to be sensual and very full-fledged and 100% in relationship with women. Therefore, I told that toxic masculinity is the result of toxic uh, femininity. But uh, God f for God's sake, that was not an attempt to uh, switch our responsibility to women in general. So the ancient history of toxic masculinity, is it really feminism and uh, we have perceived that masculine and brave man should really take a uh, responsibility to admit at least that. I am against the term of toxic masculinity at, in general and with such a very powerful phrase when we are putting together toxic and masculinity in such a toxic situation, the question remains. As uh, soon as we are discussing and touching upon the topic of masculinity, it really brings together the opposite part, which is femininity. Sorry for using the term. We can continue in a completely different context of that masculinity and toxicity about the advertising uh, domain. What uh, advertising world shows all around us and what are the expectations of the society towards a modern man is. He is not uh, defended and protected from the bombarding every day and daily uh, pressure coming from different information in a space. Uh, what, whether you can uh, show it as advertisements which are exaggerated. So, fathers, do you follow what uh, external communication and satisfaction time for my family? No, I do not follow the external information coming to the smartphones of my children. Uh, uh, my question is whether your children see advertisements. What is the most successful dog in the Paw Patrol cartoon? Is it a good, a positive image or not? So you are the one to fulfill the function of as a man, to be a, an image, a figure of man in the family. In a situation, in a certain situation, that is my wife occasionally as well, grandfather in some occasions, but they do not have some access to such external world, world yet. Once, psychologist of my children said that if you have imagined it as a problem that whether you are a good father or not. So you are a good father if you have at least thought about it. If you have asked such question to yourself, so it means that you are a good dad. There is no opportunity to do everything right. And if you will do everything right, 
it will be wrong. <laughs> I am, as a playwright, will not have a chance to see something real in the world because there is no perfect world. There is no perfect action or function. So I have an image of father who tries to do everything so right that children are going crazy for their father be the perfect one. And he be and my father has been perfect and he's become so destructive in his actions. There are so many options you and chances you can take, directions you can take from that idea. Personally, I do not think that I showcase an image, a figure of good masculinity. I'm not thinking about it at all. I hope that I do that naturally, but I really try to be a good father currently, at present. This is the primary fundamental issue for me. I have thought what actually a man would mean but uh, the thing is that so one word which is defined can we have uh, the key words sent by our the example of father and uh, reasonable to understand the meaning of a word is uh, very hard perhaps I hope I'm not the only one that everyone wishes uh, to define the meaning and the essence of one's existence and selfdom. If you are able to define that, most definitely you have done something good already. So it's too hard. So this is <laughs> this is so deep I can go. The sense, the meaning of existence is uh, quite naturally a person, an identity is really a secret to oneself. We are speaking about masculinity, about men. We are uh, coming to uh, that there are some requirements, some definitions by somebody else. Women are defining what a man would be like and what that actually means. But while we do not have uh, inner definition, so school, external structure or system, school, church, ISIS, and one of the thinkers explained that the uh, postmodern world lacked some presence of archetype watchguard for a structure to be presented. And men, future men, are looking for some discipline in quite a deviant places. Uh, Martin uh, Stach is not only as a trainer and coach or mentor, but also the uh, mayor of Riga City Council. If we are speaking not about a, a class or about the convocation of the Riga City Councillors, you can you see that some councillor at Riga City Council is not feeling well, that something wrong, some problems, uh, he faces something, some problems in family and so on. We can see that populism is very demanded when Wentz showed his presentation on the types of men. I recognize some modern politicians and politicians to be sociopathy, sociopathic behavior in politics sometimes helps and who are ready to go over the dead bodies of all the enemies to reach their goal. But um, reflecting uh, to the previous speakers, I had reflection to be what does it mean to be a good mayor of Riga City Council and to be a good father. Uh, at the pre-election time, I really 
ask the question to myself whether I was a good father because I was not coming home so late so much uh, for so long and now I try to be as soon as best mayor of the city so that my children could take pride in that as well. Yes, I would like to also speak a bit about this authenticity which Vance mentioned. And one of uh, the things people want to see in May, in men, I will uh, tell one example from my life situations. Uh, I had the situation when I started to cry when uh, online, uh, when live in the TV. So uh, there was a child missing and um, search was going on already for two days. And at that moment when I'm live on the TV, suddenly I received that information that the child has been found and uh, I couldn't uh, cope with my emotions and I was uh, crying. And, uh, and then I uh, had the reflections uh, then on, on this, uh, it was quite a difficult day. And um, some um, pointed out that uh, that, uh, that uh, I uh, was not able to do that because my profession, I'm a TV journalist and uh, I'm uh, alive and I have to hold my emotions and not to show them. But then I thought, no, if I feel like that, then I do it because I was so relieved and happy that I cried. So the question to you is how you cope with your emotions and how true uh, you are in your uh, daily uh, life. Uh, do you mean do we cry when uh, live on TV? No, I mean uh, in real life. Uh, okay, Arthur is an actor and he's crying when playing uh, some character. But I mean uh, uh, at home and, and what is society's reaction? Well, at home, I guess, yes, uh, I can say that yes, because at home I don't have to uh, to uh, show myself off, I can be myself. And um, we all have uh, the right to break down humanly. So even if I don't have supporting environment, well, what I like in these discussions is that we definitely will uh, hear a lot of comments from many people and very judging comments and what is toxic in masculinity is the need for some people uh, or majority of people always judge somebody uh, or try somebody and uh, uh, that's uh, actually says about ourselves uh, as a part of society about our capability to uh, to uh, to have a dialogue if we always try to find something uh, negative in what other people are saying so i really like this example um, what christine said uh, that you allow yourself to be a human um, let's say uh, I wouldn't like to live in such a society where some journalists say, you know, humanity, it's a trait I have developed in order to get better ratings in uh, the TV. Yeah. Your profession is very, very demanding. And we are talking about how to, how to um, face, uh, well, uh, a positive breakdown from time to time. Uh, your job is very exhausting. It, 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 I know. I've been in advertising for some years. And uh, is it easy for you to be honest with yourself and say, it's enough, I can't do it anymore, I need a, I need a break? It doesn't happen. It's this job, or you're 100% in, or you're out. And I, I really put myself 100% uh, in, which is really demanding. Uh, 
and I think my family suffers because of that. Uh, and for the end of, of, of this story, because I will have to, for the end of this uh, talk, I will have to leave in five minutes. Yes. I have another meeting. Uh, uh, I just want to tell a small story from 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 uh, my family. Uh, my son came home one day and says, uh, "Dad, uh, women are more capable uh, uh, for cleaning. They are more capable in cleaning. They are better than men." And I said, "What?" And my first reaction was to blame the society, his friends, uh, his parents of his friends, oh, what the people, what they teach children, and now they're affecting my son. And then I was thinking, for fuck's sake, I'm never at home. The only cleaning person in our house is cleaning lady, and she's a woman. Uh, he never saw me cleaning. And uh, I did, you know, men gotta do what men gotta do. So I now clean every day so i <laughs> when i arrive from from the office at seven o'clock in the evening then uh, i'm cleaning dishes or uh, anything uh because men have to to lead by example and that's the only way how to change uh, society and how to change the next generation and uh, thank you for inviting me for this conference uh, it was very very interesting for me to listen uh, I, I learned a lot, uh, and I will try to lead by example much more than I previously did. Thank you, Thank Davos. you. Thank you. Thank you. Paldies. Good luck. Um, paldies, uh, Davos, Brukete, well Thank you, Davos Brukete, Creative Director at the Croatian Advertising Agency. And uh, yes, uh, really demanding job. And uh, now Davos is running to the next meeting, and Martin Statis also has to leave. So, uh, what I wanted to say about this uh, about one structure where there is no gender policy like uh, women and men policy that is National Guards. And in the presentation of event, I saw this nice word initiative, initiation, and that is what uh, actually you need. And you know, when, when you are in National uh, Guards and uh, do what you have to do, you know, sometimes see you um, when you master something you hadn't done before, you feel much, much better. But so I am really sad that we do not have mandatory military service anymore. And uh, 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 we, because of that, we lose this initiation stage. Uh, it's still there in our men, but mostly I see that in um, in athletes, uh, those who do sport, because they uh, probably, when trained, uh, have stepped outside uh, their comfort zone. Uh, but before you run away, weakness, can it exist in, uh, for example, your new duties uh, as a mayor of Riga? Have you thought about that? Can you show uh, that w without earning political capital? Well, what people expect from a responsible person, uh, they want to be assured that everything will be fine, that we are comforting them, saying that we know what to do, we will do that. At the same time, I come from that party which is not ashamed to show its weakness. And very often when uh, I uh, was uh, meeting uh, with uh, electorate, uh, I was saying, I'm sorry, I don't know how to do that. And so, and uh, we can see that after elections, uh, uh, actually, uh, they are the parties that have elected the more uh, women, uh, not other parties. Okay, thank you for your participation and uh, yes, uh, thank you for inviting me.
So, uh, but this uh, courage button, uh, which was shown by Martin, she was great. Yes, thank you. Now I have a question to the both fathers of two children. So would you be willing to let your boys to this outside initiation so they have this experience which you cannot give uh, them yourself? Uh, like giving your uh, child to some paramilitary organization where uh, at some moment it's not going to be cool so they would understand what real life is. Well, I would like to say that I uh, would like to have had experience that because when uh, my service time was um, uh, but, uh, stepped in, uh, then they cancelled the military service. So, but uh, uh, yes, I had some crisis. My crisis was more related with the death of my father. I sort of felt that their responsibility from my father's shoulders was uh, handed over to me, and then, then my children were born, and so I um, was uh, developing myself. But showing of emotions, I would not say that I would relate that with a gender, I would more relate that with a personality. It would be difficult for me to feel empathy. That is something I am learning to do right now, and my children really help me to do that. Like with my son, um, we hug each other very often when uh, he, uh, um, I don't know, falls down and, and, and starts crying, then I am hugging him. And uh, well, that is something I have to learn. and. Um, and I am aware of that, and I am working on that. Imans Ziaduan is the famous Latvian poet said that with children it's always safer. Yes, sometimes you know I'm hiding behind the back of my children. I'm uh, afraid to go outside. Well, no, I would say. That the most encouraging feature is ability to admit that you are weak, that you are afraid to be mistaken, that you are afraid sometimes of the decisions you make because you understand what kind of responsibility it is, and to share with that. Yes, uh, Armand mentioned we can make a field um, study. Uh, like when uh, children are outside and and playing sports, and uh, what is the attitude? For example, the, the the football game, and 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 one of the parents is uh, going to uh, to the boy and saying, "It's good. Don't you worry that you didn't hit the ball, and uh, it's okay that you didn't have the goal, but you are doing five, uh, fine." Uh, but uh, another parent is coming to. Uh, his boy and saying, well, I don't see that you are playing at all. You are just, I don't know, making some nonsense here and then. And, and uh, so there are two different attitudes. And uh, yes, um, I would like to add, uh, we are talking about a family, a good man, a good dad. But uh, I guess that uh, what we lack is common features. So do you have common features with your wives? Uh, I'm not mentioning this toxic uh, masculinity that's uh, like a foreign name to me, so I will not touch upon that. But uh, the mutual uh, uh, harmonization, the reconciliation of the features, if we talk about the team, then in the team we all have to have harmonized opinions. Uh, but we often you see the clash of opinions of attention. So, so where can uh, the new boy see 
the example. Okay, uh, let's say when we are at home, uh, he sees that everything is fine. Okay, and that is good, but. Uh, uh, where to find the solution of a conflict, uh, uh, okay, if we are not just talking at, at, um, at, at the home uh, and then there is a conflict at school and, uh, for example, parents say, uh, school is wrong, the, the wrong attitude and this and this and the next day we see that in school we see what has happened uh, previous evening at home. So that's why I mean a teamwork. All involved parties, all interested parties who work on uh, growing up young men should uh, cooperate. Another sample which was mentioned by our um, politician or others, um, we all the time try to make uh, one person better or worse. So. I am uh, the better father, uh, I am uh, this, I am that. No, the most important is that we uh, live according to our consciousness. Um, to, to, uh, am I living as best as I can with my best efforts? Uh, are we entitled to say, no, that's wrong, you shouldn't do that? How can we judge? Not always those who follow the rule are right. And uh, very often uh, school faces those parents who are sort of following the rules, but uh, they have no understanding on what they are doing, and that's not working. Uh, so we cannot divide bad dad or bad man. It's like then we are speaking about some glorified hero like Batman or uh, Superman. No, I would take do it in harmony with your inner mind, do it in harmony with your soul, with your consciousness. Uh, if we say this is wrong and this is right, then show uh, uh, me uh, who is uh, the Messiah showing this narrow right path. We are not in title to go into somebody's home and say you are the right man or you are not the right man. That's why I am saying you have to be true to yourself. That's what Christina mentioned about the crying in uh, the TV, even live. So for me, it seemed that it's right. And if you did that according to your consciousness, then it's right. Uh, we should not look all the time, which is the right way to do, but uh, uh, instead look the right way to ourselves. Uh, that is a big decision to make that is at what moment we teach the small man uh, how to recognize those uh, alarm signals, the red flags, and to go through transformations, initiations, and so on. Or no, we uh, just send him to the dead end. Well, uh, like I said, the question about masculinity is very, uh, very um, personal uh, question, and everybody should show, solve it in its own way. We are talking about the good, the goodness. We are here on the scene, and we have one beautiful lady uh, between us and. Uh, like now we can say, oh, we are the good examples of men. Uh, no, absolutely not. That's not. The only thing we can do is be good enough. And that is sufficient. And to understand when it is sufficient, uh, it's very important because you have to make a place for mistake because nobody is perfect. A good enough man is the best we can hope for. And the reason why I mentioned those four models, uh, which were uh, not the right ones, uh, the, the reason is that they are 
uh, imposing uh, that they these models each of uh, them uh, by itself is the best one well but you cannot be everything and uh, you cannot give so much uh, huge compressed information to this small boy who is not grown up yet and uh, uh, that's good that we had uh, the, this uh, representative from the mass media and advertising. And uh, uh, if we talk about uh, small girls who are now following influencers in the internet and then come home and see that their parents are not able to uh, solve the conflict situation between them, so. So when a person analyzes one's life and in the course of life you uh, accumulate the luggage, the experience of self-sufficiency and self-existence, it is not so important to squeeze into a group where I feel, I because I feel quite uh, self-confident and self-contemplated, uh, I'm living for my children. And for my child, I wish to, s to find a platform. And it's dreadful when you go to school for a child and you have a panic need to really fit into the first society, that is the class and the school. If you do not have additional supportive environments, and it could be uh, some uh, extracurricular interest group uh, lessons where a young identity can find that support and self-sufficiency and really uh, not be so um, worried about the opinion of the society. So society really some perceptions and opinions and we are so panically trying to feed them but if we can really uh, take no note of that and we find some indifference toward external opinion we become self-sufficient so we have 3.5 minutes for a discussion still perhaps every panelist could briefly summarize our discussion to conclude this topic, it would be really important for you to voice what we can do. Of course, we cannot solve all that huge heap of at this stage of transformation. You cannot find yourself completely and ultimately. But where should we start? Uh, you must start with yourself and uh, compare yourself today with uh, yourself yesterday, whether you are better or not thinking about personal development and growth. If you develop yourself, then uh, then it's better for everybody else around. To continue, so I uh, switch over from I to us, to we. It's really important that there is some we uh, around. Uh, you cannot like uh, send uh, policemen away if you are uh, to blame of some accident, whether these are for women or men. Uh, it uh, does not depend. It doesn't depend how I will answer whether they are ladies present or not. Uh, to be genuine, um, to be better and develop oneself, and not to harm everybody else. We the larger, large scale we, to understand that I'm a part of something bigger and abstract from blaming somebody, they, <laughs> somewhere else distantly. So the only thing about the discussion, I can take home message that teachers, salaries for teachers should be increased so that and teachers could enter the schools. This is the thing I would wish for my son 
to have a good and best teacher at school as well. I really like the idea of not being uh, one single masculinity, but a collective masculinity where we fit in uh, our human values, our professional uh, traits. And so that it's easier for everybody else. They do not have to tackle your bad things and problems. You cannot cope yourself. And the second thing important is that a person who has identity, who has really tackled and managed oneself, turns to be a favorable and beneficial uh, member of a larger society. And you are not a uh, taker, but you are a, a giver already that you can bring benefit. You become a fireplace to warm up the somebody else in the society. So you are able of uh, providing full shelves at grocery stores, but you cannot be perfect. You can be good enough only. Christine? I liked uh, the presentation of events. Seal is to be the best version of yourself only. At least strive for that. And that from a female perspective, to have a quite a different uh, facet of men in such a discussion. So we have uh, finished our and uh, completed our first round of discussion today during our conference, and I would like to thank, and I would like to voice and express uh, the key words: uh, father, member of the society, policeman, uh, support, uh, defense. So home is the starting point, and whatever start goes on at home, you can uh, really dig up to or tease in well to dig in oneself so that a conflict would not arise in the family and in the society. So we have finished our first panel discussion and I would like to announce the lunch break. And we reconvene at 10 minutes to 1 and we will have a surprise we are not allowed to mention yet. Please uh, keep safe and socially distant, but um, together in minds, and not to blame and judge everybody.